name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters in Christ, on this fourth Sunday of Lent, let us acknowledge God's love for us and ask pardon for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray, O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebration to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In, this, in the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, there, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in his hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd, shepherd, there is nothing, nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd, shepherd. There, there is nothing, nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is, is my, my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is nothing, nothing I, I shall, shall want. want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. 
You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord Lord is is my my shepherd. shepherd. There There is is nothing nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither. He nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay in the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pillow of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said it is, but others said, no, he looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, how were your eyes opened? He replied, the man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. And they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him? Since he opened your eyes, he said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight. But, but they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked him, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son, 
and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as a Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner, he replied. If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? They answered him. I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin, but now you are saying we see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, first of all, um, happy uh, Laetare Sunday. This is a Sunday, one of two in the year, when we can wear a rose-colored uh, vestment, but I forgot to put it on. So uh, uh, maybe uh, I would have thought the seminarians would have reminded me, but uh, maybe they, they forgot also. We welcome seminarians. They're... Uh, like all ki college kids back home, because uh, college and seminary close, they both go to Mount St. Mary's. We have John McDonald, who uh, went to Pius, and uh, Scott Nimitz, who went to uh, Aquinas. So they're uh, spending the rest of their semester at our rectory and uh, finishing their courses online. So we welcome them to uh, Martyrs. So um, also nice to have Braden uh, Chorus here helping serve. So um, it is Laetare Sunday, and uh, the word means uh, rejoice, because we rejoice in the nearness of Easter. And um, of course, we're in kind of an extended Lent. Um, we're all called special way with the coronavirus to uh, prayer, uh, to fasting. Uh, whether we originally planned or not, now we're all probably giving up a lot. So um, hopefully God will bless us for this uh, Lenten season. Hopefully it's our best Lent ever because of the prayers that we will be offering, have been offering, and because of the sacrifices we're making and the almsgiving. So um, we have this holy season, and now it's basically over halfway, and uh, we look forward to Holy Week and to uh, Easter uh, whatever that may look like, we don't know. Um, God willing, our churches will be open then and uh, we can come and worship as usual. But until then, we've kind of hunkered down 
We kind of um, act like it's maybe Good Friday or um, Easter Saturday. Uh, we can't go to Mass, um, and the world is kind of different for now. So a lot to pray for, uh, both locally and worldwide. And um, I, uh, just a couple things from the Gospel. Uh, one, the question, was the man blind because of his parents? No, Jesus said it was so that his glory could be revealed through his blindness. In other words, so he could miraculously give the man sight. And uh, Jesus did that. He came to uh, allow the uh, blind to see, the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, the mute to speak, uh, to, um, to free the imprisoned, and to um, you know, heal our broken hearts, to change the world, change everything upside down. And when we accept him, he does change our world. It's a beautiful psalm today. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. It's uh, kind of called the Catholic psalm because it really does, um, it does minister to us. It does uh, shepherd us. It says so much about who the Lord Jesus is in our life. Um, Jesus in the gospel also says, I am the light of the world. And... Um, he is our light, and he calls us to live in that light and to avoid darkness, uh, plenty of darkness out there in our world that creeps in, uh, that wants to allure us and track us, but we want to walk as children of the light. I was fortunate to have a baptism today, a small group. Uh, I will say I had a beautiful baptism also on St. Patrick's Day, and um, that kind of helped me to uh, move on in this uh, coronavirus time. But when we baptize, of course, we, we light a little candle because the child is called to be light to the world. We're all called to follow Christ our light and uh, to enlighten the world. So there's plenty of things we can do in this day. Even though we're shut in, uh, we can't really go out so much, most of us. But, you know, uh, being mindful of our neighbors, uh, Jesus says, you know, love God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, but love your neighbors yourself. Perhaps a phone call uh, to a neighbor that may be shut in as well. Uh, perhaps uh, bringing over uh, something to eat or some cookies or maybe even, um, you know, a roll of toilet paper or whatever it may be. Uh, just reaching out in love and kindness at uh, this time um, goes a long way, as always. So we're called to be light to the world and we're called to let Christ's light shine through us and to radiate his, uh, his mercy, his love, his kindness. So let us pray for each other, brothers and sisters, that uh, we can persevere. And uh, God willing, uh, our Lent is halfway over. Uh, maybe, um, you know, our isolation is, is halfway over. If not, uh, we, can, we can do it together by praying for each other and by uh, um, being light to the world and salt to the earth. Uh, the Lord is our shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. God bless you all. We pray now our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Coming together as brothers and sisters in Christ, 
we turn now with confidence to our loving Father and ask him to hear these and all of our prayers. For all who have died in this coronavirus, for those who are afflicted and for all those who are suffering during this time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to war, famine, abortion, and terrorism, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are preparing for the sacraments, First Holy Communion, Confirmation, the Easter Sacraments, Marriage, and Holy Orders, that God will bless them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in our parish who are sick and are currently shut in nursing homes and hospitals, for for their healing and care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, and caregivers, and their family members, that they, that they be compassionate, patient, and truly wise, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we call to mind. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for Christopher Miller, the intention of this Mass, and also for the recently deceased um, Marie Augusta, Shirley Riley's mother, who passed away last Sunday. For the repose of her soul, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask these prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray together, if we can, the... uh, coronavirus pandemic prayer to Our Lady of Guadalupe. Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your Son, as you did at the wedding at Cana. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and world and for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you are truly our compassionate mother, health of the sick and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms and help us always to know the love of your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. The fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed Blessed be God God forever. forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all my sins.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and ever to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, for through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise our minds, and bestow birth virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with the North America martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to it their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the kingdom the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only so the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion antiphon. The Lord anointed my eyes. I went, I washed, I saw, and I believed in God. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Christ. 
body, Christ. Body of Christ. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down your heads for God's blessing. Lord, Look upon those who call to you and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. When they crucify my Lord, were you there? When they crucify my Lord, oh, 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 sometimes it causes me to. Tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified the Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? tree.